guys, I'm Shelly and uh, welcome to my bed. I can't do the whole sitting up supported by myself thing right now so we're doing the last top five Wednesday from my bed. I'm so determined to get them all done this month that um, I'm pushing it. Top five Wednesday was thought up by the lovely, gorgeous, wonderful Lainey of the Gingery Blaney. I will leave links to her down in the doobly doo, down, down, down in the blanket, uh, along with the Goodreads group. And uh, this week's is the top five books you are grateful for. I had to do this one. To be honest, I'm grateful for all the books because, you know, I love books. I love all the books. I just want to hug them and however the song goes. So my top five books that I'm grateful for. In no particular order. Let's start. Let's start with a fun one. Should we start with a fun one? Vaginas. Vagina, 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 vagina. I may have been watching quite a lot of Grey's Anatomy in the last couple of days and so I'm saying for JJ and vagina a lot. Um, but it is the Vagina Monologues by Ave Ensler and I am so so grateful for this book. This is just a wonderful look into women and their vaginas from birth to their first period to the first time they had sex, menopause, middle age, giving birth. This book is just, it's its for JJ love. We, I shouldn't say for JJ, I should say vagina. We should say vagina more. This is what I love about this book. It just makes me want to say vagina over and over and over again. And it may scare a lot of people off. But this book is really beautiful. It's really insightful. It made me more aware of my body. It made me more aware of other people's experience with their bodies. I just, I, I celebrate the JJ and the vagina and this book because it rocks my world, mum. My second book that I'm really grateful for is kind of really personal to me and that is One Last Goodbye by Kay Dilderdale which is an autobiographical story of both Kay and telling the story of her daughter Lynn Gilderdale who uh, died of Emmy. She committed suicide unfortunately because she couldn't cope with living with the illness anymore. Kay was arrested because of Lynn's death and so it's the story of her arrest and also the story of Lynn's illness and how she became ill and how she coped with it. And this is the first book I read that has a completely and utterly raw, true portrayal of what it's like to contract Emmy when you're a teenager or when you're younger than a teenager and go through the experience you go through and go through the pain and the misunderstanding of being a kid with Emmy. One particular piece that always stands out for me, Lynn comes home and says, they keep telling me I'm pretending. One of them started laughing at me and called me a silly little girl. They keep telling me to behave. Honestly, mummy, I'm not pretending. I don't want to be like this. I hate being ill. Why do they say I'm pretending? I had the same experience. Everybody just said, oh, stop being so stupid. You're pretending, you're putting it on, you just don't want to go to school. You don't get that you don't want to be ill. You don't want to be sent home. I loved school. Lynn loved school. We didn't want to be sent home and we were both told that we were crazy. So to read what Kay and Lynn have been through was like somebody just reaching out and going, I've been there, I know what it's like. You're not alone. And that's really, really important when you have an illness like Emmy. I'm grateful that I had that to read. It's so sad what happened to Kay and Lynn. But it's at the same time, I'm very, very grateful that Kay had the guts to write this book and to tell her daughter's story because it's important. Next up, what a surprise. We have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I'm grateful to this book because it brought me to booktube, it brought me to youtube, it brought me to friends, it brought me to so much. It brought great sayings into my life, it brought Isaac into my life. Everything I have now pretty much came into my life because of The Fault in Our Stars. Another book that is health related, all these books are health related really, besides for JJ's. One Million Lovely Letters by Jodie Ann Bickley. It's a non-fiction book about Jodie who was a slam poet and uh, she contracted Emmy as well. She started a project called One Million Lovely Letters where you know when you're having one of those days where you just can't do this anymore. She writes letters for people who are having those terrible days and sends them through the post. There's no better way to communicate in this day and age really. It still hasn't been up to just having a nice email is one thing but having a letter to hold in your hands that's something else. I'm grateful to this book because Jodie has a great way with words and again, like one last goodbye, um, she talks 
about ME and what it's like to have ME and I'm not good at describing what having a chronic illness is like and uh, Jodie is. As you can see I've tabbed quite a lot of bits. I couldn't plan for anything. I still can't really. I make exciting plans for what I'll do next week then frequently have to cancel them because my body has other ideas. That's true. You can't make any kind of plans or if you do the plans usually fall through to the point that I've actually just stopped making plans now because what is the point? Because sometimes you just get really really upset when you make plans and you can't do them, that's actually more painful than not making the plan at all sometimes. Reading this book just kind of brought that to the forefront for me and, and made me talking about my illness a lot easier and so I'm very very grateful for that. And plus it's it's a pick me up. I'm being very depressive right now and it's actually a pick me up book because it's about loveliness and it's about persevering through the illness and finding something that you can do while being ill. I can do booktube while being ill and she writes lovely letters while being ill and so it's all about finding the things that you still can do, not the things you can't do. Let's end on a happy note with The Term of the Term of Tight Tyler by Jean Kemp. This is a middle grade uh, junior school, primary school book. Tyke has a best friend named Danny who is severely dyslexic and both Tyke and Danny are working out this plan to try and get into the same high school together so they try and well they try and get past the test in any way they can and they maybe try and cheat on the test a little bit. When I read this I loved it because each uh, chapter begins with a joke and I grew up listening to it on audiobook and it has all these great memories but I'm just realizing something. Ty Tyler is gender neutral. You go all the way through the book not knowing Tyke's gender and that's didn't occur to me when I was young and how much I actually enjoyed that and loved that and it didn't even I didn't even think about it whether type was a girl or a boy or somewhere in the middle if you like gender neutral characters or you just like a nice primary school mad uh, story then then read this I mean I'm also grateful because it's just funny and it just makes me happy that is my top five <laughs> books I'm grateful for a bonus mention I am currently extremely grateful for 84 Ch Charing Cross Road and it's also, this is a double edition and it's also got the Duchess of Bloomsbury in it by Helena Half because this is what I'm currently reading and it's cracking me up and it's making me really really happy and I'm having a, a not very well time and right now it's just making me smile so currently really really grateful for that. So yeah, I hope you guys are good and um, you're keeping warm because it's freezing here in the UK. I will see you guys soon, maybe for more Top 5 Wednesdays if we carry on. Okay, see you later. Bye.